Project Camelot Whistleblower Radio. We are talking to Jim Stone, and uh, this wow, this show is on fire in more ways than one. Uh, okay, Jim, uh, we were just talking off the, you know, on the side there about uh, Stuxnet, about the idea that the Israelis could actually be um, in control of not yeah, just our, our nuclear facilities, but also, I was just thinking, oil, refineries, oil refineries. Uh, We're talking about BP yes. oil spill. We're talking we're about We're looking using... at the new face of warfare. It's the new face of war. Um, if, if something is not done to stop this, uh, we're looking at the new face of war. And I want to go on a little bit of a rant here. Um, I, I, I want to read a portion of the interview that I did with this nuclear engineer. And then key it into the greatest threat that America now faces. And this really is a major threat. And, and in case I never get on the air again with you or with anyone else, this has to be said on the air. I, I swear uh, I, I, I'm going to go on a little monologue here, if that's okay. Go ahead. Are you there? Okay. The following is what he said in the interview. I started in the American nuclear program all the way back at the time of the Manhattan Project and have been involved in reactor design and nuclear engineering my whole life. There is one answer we all searched for, and it was how to close the nuclear loop. When a reactor, such as a boiling water reactor, uses fuel, the waste products, which are highly radioactive isotopes that have a different fission characteristic than a fuel, build up in the fuel and poison the nuclear reaction. The reactor, such as a boiling water reactor, can only use the fuel until it gets contaminated by these isotopes long enough to change the nature of the nuclear reactors, ta nuclear reactions taking place. The reaction environment inside a boiling water reactor is only one such an environment that will work to trigger a chain reaction. If that, and if that spent fuel is put into a reactor made from different materials, those materials can favor the burning of the poison, poisonous isotopes and use the isotopes as fuel until the fuel is pur purified of them and therefore had its original radiological characteristics restored. Once that is accomplished, the fuel can go right back into the boiling rea water reactor and be used as new. We perfected the second reactor design, which used liquid sodium as a coolant, and that, and that reactor ran much hotter, 1,100 Fahrenheit as opposed to 550 in a boiling water reactor. The liquid sodium circulated inside the reactor in lieu of water. Okay, I'm going to skip that. He specifically stated that the burn down was so complete that the spent fuel was safe to handle directly with bare hands and needed no special care or maintenance at all. He went on to lament about what a waste of money it was because the fuel is expensive and, and, and Carter banned this technology by executive order. And they only, he went on to lament about Carter banning this because of what a waste it was because the fuel is expensive and they were only using it to about 5% of its total potential. He lamented the fact that its life's greatest accomplishment got banned for no good reason and it was a tremendous waste of money to not use the technology his team developed. Electric electricity would have been cheap, real cheap, so cheap that homes would not have been heated with oil or natural gas. Electricity would have been the only sensible choice. This would have been America's free energy future, with the only real cost being maintenance of infrastructure. His take on it was that we are paying too much for electricity now. I guess that's, now how, that's how an engineer thinks. But here is my take, and it has nothing to do with price, Preservation of resources or free energy. And this is where you really need to listen. Nuclear reactors are huge. I mean, they are huge. They have an enormous amount of nuclear material in them. One boiling water reactor the si core the size of the ones at Fukushima can easily hold enough fissionable, fissionable material to make countless atomic bombs. And with the technology that makes reusing that fuel illegal, it builds up at a rate of 25 tons per gigawatt year. That means that even small facilities like Fort Calhoun have a, approximately a million pounds of highly radioactive poison fuel sitting in their pools waiting for the right combination of problems to cause a disaster. When GE designed these nuclear facilities, both here and abroad, they had calculated that it would, they would indeed succeed in closing the nuclear loop. So they designed these nuclear facilities with approximately 20%, I mean 20 times safety margin in the fuel pools because they did not had a clear date when this technology would be perfected. It was my impression from this engineer that they got it sooner than expected. So fortunately, the fuel pools were overbuilt, but they were never built to withstand the fuel burdens that would result from a political decision to destroy the technology altogether. So now, 40 years down the road, we have fuel pools around this country that are so full 
they have exceeded even the extremely generous safety margin they were originally, originally designed to have, and even the modest fuel pools have o- over 400 tons of highly active isotope-ridden stent fuel in them. Having functional fuel pool, pool cooling systems is never intended to be necessary, and now all it's going to take is, is a virus, an extended power outage, a smart bomb, anything to any one of these nuclear facilities around the country, and we are going to have another Fukushima on our hands because these fuel pools have gone criminally, criminally over capacity. And it's our own federal government, it's the Illuminati, it's people who wanted this country destroyed that caused this situation. We really do have a nuclear threat in this country. Um, I, I, I can't express it more. If we get like a, 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 a facility like Brown's Ferry that's an exact match to Fukushima, if we go to war with Russia and that thing gets smart bombed, we're in deep doo-doo because that thing is sitting right in the middle of our heartland. It's going to go off and it's going to radiologically poison the entire country. And that's just, that's just Brown's Ferry. All of our other nuclear facilities, what about all the other ones that are sitting in the, in the heartland? Um, this is, 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 and, and Okay, Jim, Brand. I got to stop you. I got to stop you there. I really appreciate this is great, uh, fabulous information. Uh, I want. I just want to bring you back around to this notion that Stuxnet virus is is actually in the hands of the Israelis. That what it, it is tantamount to them also having their their finger on a button that in which they can trigger a nuclear incident. So they don't need to bomb one of those these reactors. Yeah, that's these, exactly these it. Tools. You know. We, we don't need to wait for a smart bomb from Russia to have a problem. Right. Or a smart so, bomb from China, a smart bomb from Timbuktu. So if, it, if, it if all, pressure uh, wants to be brought to bear, they could basically end up running the world by threatening to... Uh, that's exactly to, what the article Nuclear Blackmail is about. And that's one that I didn't want to want to get into. we maybe on another program because that gets really deep into this conspiracy. But wow. we have a major problem on our hands. And... and I and between okay, the virus, I... go ahead. Between this virus and between uh, between the nuclear deterrent that Israel has managed to get in place around the world, which was fairly well ferreted out in my Fukushima report, and I just adapted it over. I've got it all explained in nuclear blackmail. Why they developed their deterrent this way? Um, it's yeah. We have we have a major problem. What we have now is a situation where if they want their banker bailout, they're going to get it. If they want Anything from this country, they're going to get it because they can destroy us on a whim. They can destroy us. Okay, that's very, very important. Uh, that, you know, and, and this is why our government went against the will of the people and did the banker bailout. They knew that that was political suicide. They didn't want to do it. Why on earth do you want to give $10 trillion to a bunch of European bankers? You know, that's where, where all the money ended up going was over in Europe. They didn't pay off our houses. They still took our houses. The houses were paid for three times over by that bailout, yet we're still losing them in foreclosure. Why? It's because the money wasn't for the foreclosure crisis at all. Okay. um, We are working against the clock here. I just want to take a couple calls if we have time. Do you mind, Jim? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. uh, We've got Jason from, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be saying your name, Uh, area code 707. Hi. Yeah, it's okay. You could say my name. But, um, yeah, great talk. I'm, I don't want to change the subject too much, but I was wondering, Jim, if you're familiar with the strange sounds that have been going on um, okay. recently in Clintonville. Yes. Yes. I'm really familiar with that stuff, but that's another one where, where I... There is, is a rumor, and my take on these strange sounds going off, and what I really believe is is that there's a war going on between the light forces, the good people that I talked about at the NSA and the FBI and the CIA, and the bad people that are working for the Illuminati elite. There is a war going on, and we're having some of these underground facilities being destroyed, and that's where the sounds are coming from. And I don't know who's winning. Okay. Uh, well, it'd be fascinating to hear your evidence for that because you sound like a pretty technical guy. You must have a technical reason for st- yeah, making I, a statement I went, like I went, that. I went down that rabbit hole, but it's way too much to get into this late in the program. Okay, we're going to have to have you back, Jim. Uh, just incredible. Sorry, caller, I'm going to let you go because we need to let another person not ask a question. Okay. Thanks. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Um, we've got area code 612. You're on the line with Jim Stone and Carrie Cassidy. Hi, am I on? 
Yes. Yeah, you're on. Yeah, I got a question about your uh, something you have on your website about the Sandy Bridge being uh, can be remotely disabled. I thought you yeah. have to in, enable that feature for that to work. Um, you know, technically they say that you have to enable this stuff, but I don't believe it because there's a back door for everything. And uh, well, what he's talking about is uh, Sandy Bridge uh, is the new i7, i5, i3 platform that Intel released earlier this year. And uh, it has what's called uh, Anti-Theft 3.0, I think. What this is, is if your laptop gets stolen, you can, uh, you can uh, remotely disable or destroy that CPU, which basically bricks the laptop. Um, okay, we're, and, I'm sorry, we're, we're at the end of our hour here. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for, for being on the line. Uh, Jim, I want you to give your website, and please do donate to Jim Stone. He's got a donate button I see on his website. I'm sure he could use the help. Uh, yeah, it's, Jim, it's all going to come through Western Union because PayPal has been banned, and any time I link a, a, a bank account, it doesn't work. Um, so uh, it's got to come through Western Union. Okay, no problem. And uh, what what else do you want to say? Less like some parting words here. Uh, before well, you know, you know, th thank you for being here. Um, you know, false flag terror in the name of the environment is something that they went on to when they when they figured out that uh, that that their other false flag terror stuff wasn't working to the effect that they wanted. Uh, it fooled people really good. They got a lot of mileage out of it, but I intend to put an end to it. I, I want this this entire era of false flag terror in the name of the environment to be gone. No rules. No rules. No taboo topics. No taboo topics. No fear of doom. No fear of doom. We are. We are. American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio.